Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Devs on Devs in Production. My name is Chico Fili and today we'll be talking about the cloud debugger from Google. So the cloud debugger lets you inspect the state of your running applications in real time without stopping or slowing it down. Your users won't be impacted while you capture the call stack and variables at any location in your source code. You know, so typically every time we have to debug or troubleshoot an application, as developers, we usually have to set up the repository locally and then scatter a bunch of print statements or console log lines across the whole code base. And then obviously redeploy the application while we monitor the logs to inspect the variables and then ultimately resolve these issues. Now with the cloud debugger, you wouldn't have to do any of the things I just mentioned. Also, this is particularly useful if you find yourself being an engineer that doesn't have access to the running application in production. Once the cloud debugger is set up and it's live, you can debug away. Well, they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So you know what? Let's jump into a quick demo. Okay, to get this going, you need to get the repository, which is at github.com, chikofili forward slash stackdriver dash example. Um, to set it up and running, read the readme and that should get you up quickly. I already have this set up. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the application um, is deployed. Okay, I'm going to run scaffold run. And this will run. And this is going to run and deploy the application. I'm just going to speed this up here. Okay, so now that the application is deployed, I'll just give it a quick check. This is the API endpoint. Okay, so now that we have the app redeployed, we need to connect and install our debugger packages. So I'm gonna switch to switch to the front end app and I use yarn, I'm gonna yarn add. Okay, so all dependencies seem to be installed. And the next thing we're going to do is set them up. So you need to make sure that it's set up in the root of your Node.js app. Remember, Debugger also works for Java, Python, Go, Ruby, PHP, .NET Core. So it all depends on the application you're running. I'm running Node.js and one of the requirements is that I should make sure that this is installed before any require files. Now, what I have here is I have already with my deployment, I have specified my environment. I have the name and the version number in my package.json file. And then I have passed the service context to the cloud debugger. And in the service context, what I did is I gave it the name of the service and also the environment to which it is running. And then I gave it a version number. And you would understand once we start to demo out how this works soon enough. This is to help you differentiate which application you are debugging at any point in time. So I'm just gonna set this up for both repos. Uh, and then once you set it up for both repos, I already have it set up for the front end, as you can see, and I think we are good to go. Now make sure this is already built and redeployed. I think to do that, all you have to do is do a git commit to git push and then rebuild the application. So I'm gonna have that rebuilt. So one thing I forgot to enable as part of its settings is the debuggers allow expressions feature. This feature allows you to evaluate complex expressions or traverse object hierarchies when a snapshot is taken. So I'm just going to enable it and speed this up. So before we move on, there's one more piece of business we need to take care of, and that's selecting the source automatically. So Cloud Debugger is going to be able to capture 
the context in which it is debugging but it also needs to link it to the actual files where they exist either in your you know in your um github repository or bitbucket or so on and so forth now there are two ways to do it you can get it to select it automatically or you could do it manually you can dig into the report into the google cloud documentation on how to select it manually but for automatic i'm going to select node.js as that's the framework i'm using and then I'm going to update the source context. Now I have two services, so I'm going to do this for both the front end and the back end. Remember, you need to run this from the root of your application and then tell the, the command line tool where you want the source context file kept. That way it will be able to map the context automatically. Okay, as you can see, there are two new files which essentially just tells the cloud debugger which repository and then also which revision ID it should use. Okay. And then once those two files are there, just do a redeploy and that should do the trick. Now, ideally you're not supposed to check in the source context file into the repo. So I'm just going to ignore remove mine. So the first time you actually run the cloud debugger, your repository won't be uh, connected automatically, even though we've set up the source context. The source context only tells the debugger where to find the files or, you know, the source code. But if it doesn't have access to get the source codes, then it won't be able to show it. Now this should only happen once. So if you're, if you find yourself in that position, because as you can see, I already have access to my repository. But if this is the first time, what you need to do is select source, select the server, which is github.com. And then the first time you select this, hopefully it's supposed to, because if you check the repository, you might not see your repository in the dropdown. But even at that, the first time you select GitHub, it should take you to complete OAuth authorization, giving Google Cloud Platform access to your repository. So it will, it will sign in and then it will first, you know, connect using your OAuth credentials, but it still might not gain access to the repository. There may be an extra step. So if you still have connected to GitHub and you still can't see your repository in the dropdown, then the next thing you need to do is go to GitHub. Um, already I'm on GitHub, go to settings, go to the applications go to authorized OAuth apps and click on Google Cloud Platform and then look for the organization or the account in which you know you want to grant access to. Then you can click grant and once you click grant, Cloud Debugger will have access to your repository. You obviously don't need to do this for public repositories and once that's done, your repositories will be listed here. If you don't want to do that automatically, then you can always upload the source code. You can do a one-time linking using the source. You don't necessarily have to do the granting. You can use local files and so on and so forth. It all depends on what you want to do and what kind of organization and what kind of security protocols that you have. So now we have the debugger all set up. I'll check, as you can see, our applications are running and we are running version one, which is what the cloud debugger has picked up a version one. Now notice there are two or three versions of this here. And that's because I had previously done multiple deployments. So there's back end and front end with the same hash and there's a previous deployment. So what it does is I think the cloud debugger keeps track of at least your last five deployments, which have different source code. So you can always pick, but once you know the most recent one, um, by version numbering. So if I did a new deployment, I, I just bumped the version number and I would always know the version number and the environment I'm looking for. Okay, let's give it a go. Cloud debugger functions in two modes. The first is snapshots and the second is log points. Snapshots is the same thing as a breakpoint in, in Node.js application, for example, where you get to traverse all the expressions and all the variables that are with that request. And log points are the same thing with console logs in your application uh, code base. Now, remember, if you do not select the right 
application version or the right source file, Cloud Debugger will be re, you know, connected to the wrong context. Therefore, any snapshot or log point you add at that point may, especially log points to be honest, may not show up in your logs. So if you want your log points to work effectively, you have to make sure that you're using the right version, which is the right, and when I say the right version, which is the actual live deployed version, they should match in terms of context. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's add a log point. A log point is as easy as selecting the log point tab. There are two tabs here, snapshots, which we talked about earlier. You select log point, add something that will be easy for you to identify the log point. In my case, I will just use uh, Tutes uh, Query, the semicolon, and then I would ask for the request dot query object to be printed out to the console and I'll add that. Now, once you see your log point has been added, remember log points expire after 30 days. So if you've added a log point, it was not going to stay there forever. You have to keep adding them because they're meant for debugging. Now the application is live running. Um, and this is the URL to the backend API, which is where I have added the log point. As you can see, it's in the source backend routes index. This is the, the, the root file, but this is where I've added the log point, which is where exactly I want the information to be printed out. So think of this as just adding a console log. What I'm going to do is I've already added some query parameters. I'm just going to add a refresh here and just maybe change this to world so that there's variety in data okay just a couple more refreshes and now what i'm going to do is go to the logs viewer um the logs viewer i know this is already loaded but you can find it here in the google console menu and that's the logs viewer to load up now you need to narrow down your logs view the easiest way to do that is to select the google container engine select the cluster and select the namespace and if possible if you want further narrow down you can select the back end in where the information should be printed out as you can see yeah, I've not even filtered and you can see that the logs are already there if I wanted to become laser focused I can use the SD out alone and then I can actually just filter by tooth query and then it will only show me what I want to see I'll stream the logs with this filter and while that's streaming i'm going to do a little bit more so i'm going to add two more things um, and maybe refresh this two more times and switch now remember this is streaming so we will wait a few seconds it takes sometimes 30 seconds 15 seconds for it to get saved and then show up in the log points and there we go <laughs> all right and this is how to set up the cloud debugger and use snapshots and log points thanks a lot for watching guys and if you found this video useful please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell icon so you get notified every time i pop one of these videos out i'll catch you guys in the next one Thank you.